All right, guys, just giving everybody a couple minutes to get in the room. Thanks for joining today. All right, I think we can kick it off. Um, thank you guys so much for joining. I see a couple of familiar faces in the attendees, so really nice to get to see you all. Um, my name is Meg Van Deventer. For those of you who don't know me, I'm an associate product manager here at Paperless Parts. Um, and today I'm going to be talking to you about unpacking the latest assembly table updates. So we're going to talk a little bit about some of the things that we've released to help you guys quote assemblies faster, more effectively, and reduce risk over the last few months. Um, I'm also going to set aside a little bit of time just to talk through best practices or common pitfalls that I see when customers are quoting assemblies. Um, I did start at Paperless as an implementation project manager, so I've done a ton of training on assemblies. Um, I have a good amount of experience talking users through our tools, and I did write a lot of our documentation in the knowledge base on um, quoting these parts. So really looking forward to sharing some of the stuff that I've learned and hearing what you guys' experience has been like, what you'd like to see next. Um, I do ask that you save any Q&A that you have until the end of our session. We will be also recording this meeting so that you guys can follow along if you want um, and come back and review what we've gone over, maybe share it with other members of your team after the fact. So let's get started. Today's agenda, um, just as an overview, let's talk first a little bit about why we made these enhancements. Um, so quoting assemblies is something that we constantly hear from our users is one of the most challenging aspects of quoting, and it's incredibly time consuming. There's a lot of room for error when you're quoting more than one part in a part. Um, when you're costing an entire assembly, especially one with a larger or more complex bomb structure, the last thing you wanna have to worry about is just where you are in the bomb, how to find the part that you need or how to get around in the build a quote. So a lot of the recent upgrades that we've made are primarily focused on navigation, setting up your bomb and performance, making sure that you're not waiting on us to be able to do the next step in your quote. Um, I'm gonna give you guys a demo of a couple of things that are new. So we have, Single level drag and drop reorganizing, um, not to be confused with drag and drop bomb restructuring, but this is a tool that we built to help you guys confirm your bomb structure before you start costing. We're gonna talk about new navigational tools like breadcrumbs, unique URLs, and tooltips. Um, we'll, we'll talk through a couple of recent performance improvements that we've made, especially for larger, more complex bombs. Uh, and then I'll just talk you guys through some best practices, like I said, any pitfalls that I've seen in the past for quickly quoting assemblies and components. And then we'll leave plenty of time again at the end to answer any questions that you may have. So let's jump in. All right, so let's start by talking through a couple of recent changes that we made to the assembly table, um, the components table that you see on a part. Um, if you quote assemblies, I'm sure that you spent a lot of time in here. You may have focused or noticed that several months ago, this started looking really different. Um, one of the things that we implemented that not everybody I think is aware of, they can take advantage of is light drag and drop reorganization. So what this means is let's say that you receive an RFQ for an assembly part that includes a parts list, either as a CSV or listed out on a print, along with a CAD file. You probably want to confirm that the structure of the CAD file matches the structure on the print and that there aren't any parts that's missing, um, parts that are missing. Maybe there's purchase components that weren't included in the model that you're going to need to add. Um, and performing that check can be complicated or frustrating when you have a ton of parts in the CAD bomb and they're not listed in the same order as they are in the parts list. You can't really do just a one to one comparison. So one tool that we've introduced here is, like I said, drag and drop reordering within a single level. So let's say for a part like this one, I've got 14 manufactured components and a sub-assembly um, within this part. If I needed to compare them to a parts list and I felt like they were out of order or it was difficult to do that, um, while you're in the child bomb view, if you remove this grouped option, and what we're doing there is we're grouping them by what they are, whether they're a sub-assembly, a manufactured component, or a purchase component, you can see here. So it's more of a characteristic. If you remove the grouped option, um, this is where you're going to be able to reorder them and assign whatever order is most valuable or useful to you. So if I need to do a comparison of this part with another part, um, and this fork dot step should be up here, um, that's what's listed in the parts list. You can do any drag and drop reorganization that you want. And that's going to, as you can see, be reflected in the tree over there. So one thing that's nice about that is even though I have to do this level by level, because we don't allow yet for drag and drop reorganization of the bomb structure where you're drag and dropping something to another level, um, maybe within a sub assembly or out to the top level, 
you can do this for each level in the tree and make sure that the tree that you have in the navigation bar over here matches your parts list so that you can do a really quick one-to-one -one comparison. So that's drag and drop reorganization. It's a simple tool, but it can be powerful when you're doing that first confirmation just to make sure that you're in a good spot before you start costing. Another thing is when you're working in a larger or more complex assembly, maybe one that has multiple sub-assemblies like this one, um, one thing that we heard a lot from users for a while is that it can be tricky to exit a part when you are quoting it or a child part. So if I'm deep in this assembly, let's say I'm within this sub-assembly and I'm actually quoting a child part of this, so I'm two layers deep. Um, before we made these improvements, hitting the back button or exiting this part would have taken you straight back to the top level of the assembly. Um, and for a lot of users, especially if you're four or five layers deep, that can be really confusing or frustrating. We're now using a breadcrumb navigation system. So what that means is it's a little bit easier to hop in between levels without having to rely exclusively on this navigation tree in the left-hand side. Um, for instance, if I finish quoting this part and I just want to hop to a sibling of this part within this subassembly, I can click here. So these two parts are going to be other parts at the same level of the bomb that I'm currently working in or within the subassembly. If I just want to go one level up, I don't want to have to go all the way back to the very top of the assembly part. I can click here. Um, and it's just a quick way to understand where you are within the assembly structure without having to go back to the components table. So nice way to kind of like get a grasp of uh, your surroundings. One other reason that that can be effective is because we've introduced unique URLs for assembly components recently. So if I want to share this part with a member of my team, maybe I have a question for a more advanced engineer about runtimes or um, a risk that I want to run by them, or I just need a uh, quote for an outside service for a part, um, I can copy and paste this URL and send them that instead of sending them a link to the entire assembly part and just telling them which component they need to find. So it's a lot easier to narrow in on information that you're looking for. Um, let's just take a look here. So you can see that takes me to the assembly, but it takes me to the specific child part. Um, and if I'm a person who does just get dropped in here again, I can kind of get a sense of my surroundings and where I'm at in the assembly using these breadcrumbs. I'm not just in some random part in the middle of the assembly, so a much better sense of where you are. One thing that we've also heard from users is that especially when you're working in an assembly that has a lot of purchase components or similar parts, um, it can be difficult to get a sense of which part is which. So um, maybe let's look at this example, or sorry. Let's take a look at, click the wrong button. Let's say I'm in the flat bomb and I have um, two parts, this base dot step and top dot step, and I'm not necessarily sure exactly what the difference is between them. Or if I have five hex nuts here and they're all just a little bit different. Um, I had a customer tell me once a hex nut is a hex nut is a hex nut. It can be really tough to find exactly what you're looking for or differentiate between components just based on the file name, which is the primary information that we give you guys here. Sometimes it can even be impossible. Um, with our more recent updates, one thing that you can do is you can hover over parts within the tree to see a thumbnail. So that means that if you want to get a better idea of the geometry and know what it is that you're looking at, you no longer have to rely just on file name or even on part name. Um, you get a little bit more of a descriptive sense of what the part is based on its geometry by hovering over it. And then you can always click on that part if that is what you're looking for to hop in here. Finally, um, the other recent update that we made for assemblies is performance enhancements. So this is a slightly smaller subset of our customers, but if you work with really large bombs, and for us, that's anything that's over about 100 components in paperless, you may have noticed for a while that it can be really painful to perform bomb manipulation. So that's moving components up and down a level, that's converting or adding purchase components or adding another component as a file. Um, that stuff can take a while. Uh, we recently released a series of performance, in, performance enhancements that mean these actions are significantly less likely to time out and also that they're a lot faster. So adding a purchase component to any part with over 100 components is about three times faster, faster now, um, which is a really significant increase when you're adding 
15 purchase components to a bomb structure, that time does add up. So I would encourage you guys, if you do spend time quoting larger purchase comp or um, larger bombs in paperless and you want to get a feel for the difference yourself, um, take it for a spin, load in a larger part. Let us know if you notice any difference. This is uh, an area where we're always iterating and improving. So we really want to hear your feedback. All right. Um, Anybody have any questions about our updates or enhancements before I dive into best practices for quoting common pitfalls? I can't see you guys, so I'm waiting for the chat. We'll give it just a second here, but all right. Oh, got one. Sure, Daniel. Um, what can we help with? And parts that are used in multiple assemblies be only costed once and then copied to multiple assemblies. Yes, so we do allow copying pricing between per, um, assembly components that are in multiple line items or within multiple quotes. Um, and copy pricing is actually something I'm about to walk through here in a minute as a best practice. So um, we will jump into that. You are a little bit ahead of me, but that's a good thing. Yeah, no problem. All right, let's dive in. So the first thing that I like to talk about is just the flow of quoting assemblies and paperless parts. Um, because we provide automation in your costing that's based on the geometry of parts um, or based on the, their bomb structure, so maybe like the number of purchase components that they have, um, it is best practice to always start by making sure that your bomb is accurate before you start costing. And what I mean by that is not just that it has all of the correct parts, but that they're in the right order and that they are correctly identified as either a subassembly, a purchase component, or a manufactured component. So if you're not familiar with these concept concepts, um, I would suggest using these little icons to kind of familiarize yourselves with how we do this breakdown. Within paperless, anything that has a little grid is an assembly part. So this is where you would put a router that calls out how you're going to be putting together multiple parts. This is assemblies and subassemblies. A little cube, this is a manufactured part. So this is a single part uh, that you're gonna be making out of a piece of raw material. These are the parts that we can do geometric automation for. We can look at what their cut length is. Um, we can do an interrogation and get results on their features. That's something that we can't do for assembly parts. And then anything that has this symbol is a purchase component. So it's a part that you're gonna be buying and that you're likely costing as just a piece price. You're not gonna do any actual steps on the shop floor that need to be reflected in the router to cost it. Um, so even though those have been correctly assigned here, and uh, if we take a look at the flat bomb, we'll see that this part initially came in as a manufactured component. It should actually be a purchase component. So I'm gonna go in and convert it to a purchase component. Most of you are probably familiar with this flow, but I do always just like to drive home that this should really be your first step when you come into quote and assembly, make sure that you agree with the uh, designation that we've made in the tree. Another thing that you wanna do is you wanna make sure that parts with hardware have correctly been assigned. So one thing that um, our software system does is any part that has multiple components, um, we are going to consider that an assembly part or subassembly on upload. This is because we can't always differentiate what parts should be purchase components versus a part that you're going to make from the CAD file itself. So even though we're calling this out as a subassembly, we may notice if I click into it, it's actually just one part that I'm going to be making on the floor and then two purchase components that that part should be consuming. And I don't want this extra router that's additional complexity that I just don't need in my shop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to convert this assembly to a part with hardware. You can do that by clicking these three buttons and saying, replace assembly with manufactured component. This is an incredibly powerful action to know. So I just selected which part is the part that I'm actually gonna be making, the parent part that consumes the purchase components. And you'll notice it removed that subassembly. And now the tree is accurately reflecting that instead of an assembly where we're putting a couple of things together, we have one part that consumes two pieces of hardware. These are the types of things that you wanna be doing before you start assigning any costing. Another thing that I would suggest is if you are costing a true assembly part, Make sure that you're not assigning a process that has any geometric automation in it or is calculating how um, 
calculating the cost of actually machining or laser cutting a part, right? So right now we'll notice that I'm in this top level section for this assembly. This router is for the entire assembly itself. I only want to be capturing steps that are related to putting together its child parts here. And that's likely going to be using any process that has the word assembly in the name. So I have assembly or weld or assembly. I'm not going to assign a material. That's all that I need. Most of your organizations, if you quote assemblies, should have this. This is something that we set up during onboarding. And you'll notice that these operations are all related to costing the assembly. None of them are laser or raw material costs or anything like that. Those router steps are going to live with your manufactured component down here. That's best practice because that's where we can provide the most automation. Something else that you can do, um, and let's take a look at this part as an example, just because it has a couple more components that, than that cabinet one. So if I'm looking at my flat bomb here, I see a lot of very similar parts, um, parts that are just simple sheet metal parts. Maybe they're all the same material, right? So I'm going to go ahead and select all of them. If you're not familiar with this action, this is bulk opt updating process material and finish. So if I know they're all laser and I know that they all need the same material, 5052, I don't need to go through and actually assign that process one by one to each of these parts. I can just do it in one go. There we go. And you can see pricing update from the table. Let's say, though, that instead of being just kind of like similar parts the way that these are, I'm costing something like uh, not this cabinet assembly is not the best example, but maybe a part that has a left and right hand part where they are truly very, very similar. Um, and I not only want to just assign the same process to them, but I want to do the same routing steps, the same overrides or estimated setup times or run times. I really want exactly the same costing to be associated with each of these. What you can do is you can use copy pricing. And I'm going to show that both within this uh, assembly and with another assembly. So for this part, let's go in, do my costing. I'm going to add an operation that's not already listed in here. So maybe let's say we're going to do a finish. And I'm going to make a couple of overrides. So maybe I look at this part and I say, actually, this should be 11 minutes and I need to account for deburring. So this is going to be a five minute runtime on this one. I want to bring this same exact costing over um, to another part within this assembly. So I'm going to select here, go to actions and then choose copy pricing. So I'm selecting the part that I have already costed. And then I can choose to bring the same costing either to other assembly components within this quote, or um, like you said, uh, Daniel, I can go over to choose different quote and I can browse any other quote or line item that I have to find um, another assembly and copy it to one of those components. So if I select one of these, you'll see we can see the line items. I don't have a quote that I know off the top of my head is a great example to copy over to, um, but it will look very much like this. So you'll be able to go in, review all of your options. If you go to components, and then let's say maybe I wanted to copy over the same exact router to this part. I'm going to bring over both material and operations. And then if I go to this part, and I apologize, I didn't keep track of which one that was, um, but it's going to have exactly the same routing and overrides populated to that part. Let's check this one. I think it's this one. It is. There we go. So it's the same operations, same overrides, same info, and the same exact thing is going to happen if you copy to another component in a different quote. All right, guys. Um, anybody else have any questions or anything that they'd like to see demonstrated about assemblies today? None yet, but I do want to give you guys a second just to type them out or raise your hand. Looks like Rob has a question. I'm going to hit allow to talk, Rob, and you can unmute yourself. Hey, Meg. Uh, how are you? Uh, we're interested in copying components of an assembly or the entire assembly to another line item. How yeah. do we go yeah. about that? 
Yeah, great question. Yeah, great question. Great to hear from you, Rob. So, um, and I'm just going to ask you to mute if you don't mind. I had an echo there, but um, today we do not have the option to copy pricing from multiple components or an entire assembly to another multiple component part. Um, are you looking to copy pricing between similar parts or are they the same exact geometry, same structure that you want to more import? Like it's a historical part that you've quoted in the past that is part of a different assembly. Uh, they're similar parts. And then uh, we get the basis with material and operations and then I can edit from there. Or the, the same part with different finish options. Same part with different finish options. Yeah. So um, yeah, again, unfortunately, like I said, this is something that we don't currently have. This is definitely functionality that we are really interested in getting you guys. Um, right now, the best option is if it's the exact same part, but with different finish options, you can take advantage of our import historical part feature over here. So let's say I want to, like, you're thinking about a part that you have, a. I guess, let me give an example where let's say within a, this quote, you want to provide two different options for the same assembly, but with a different finish. Um, you can either duplicate the entire assembly as another quote item and put a different finish on that. Or if I'm understanding you correctly, more likely there is maybe a shared sub-assembly um, that you need to add or you want to be able to just bring over pricing for. You don't want to have to recost that same sub-assembly or multiple component part. You can always import a historical part into a quote. Let's see. So maybe I've quoted this part in the past and I need to merge it into whatever um, assembly I'm currently working in. Let's say that this is a sub-assembly of this part. You can always import a historical sub-assembly and merge it as a component of this part. Um, I can't do that right now because it's in to quote, so I'm just going to go ahead and do replace reference part with new version. All that's doing is making sure that I'm not messing with any historical quotes that this part is located in. So yeah, let's say I need to bring this part. This is a part that I've already costed in the past as a historical subassembly, and it should be the same part but slightly different in this sub or um, within this assembly. You can merge historical parts into bomb structures in new or existing quotes. So I'm going to say, oh, merge quote items. Both of them are in multiple quotes. I apologize. Here we go. Merge quote items as components. And then I'll say, this is the part that I'm really quoting. This is the historical subassembly that I want to add to it so I don't lose my costing and merge. Um, this works primarily for users that I've spoken to who do very similar assemblies. So maybe they have a, like a line of parts that they're requoting that have the same subassembly, but a couple of different things about the bomb structure. You can just bring in that historical subassembly or assembly and import it and merge it with your new part. Um, but if you have slightly different geometry right now, the best method is to copy pricing between individual components. We don't have an option for copying pricing between multiple components. Again, though, that is functionality that we're interested in building. Um, so I would suggest that you talk to whoever your current contact is at Paperless Parts about um, what specific cases you would want to use that in, because uh, we do use that feedback when we are building new features and um, it's really important that we have it just to make sure that we give you guys exactly what you need. So I appreciate you guys asking. Wish I had a better answer for you right now though, for sure. Hi Rick, good to see you. Um, anonymous attendee, is it possible to rearrange quote line items? Yes, it is. Um, so there's a little gray box over here next to each line item. If you click and drag that, you can move line items and rearrange them on a quote. Hope that answers your question. Anybody else have a question that I can answer while we're here? Awesome. Um, Rob, I do just also want to follow up. We have some documentation on how to best do the flow that I just showed you. So I'll share that with, make sure that that's shared with you guys after the session um, 
for everybody else. If you have any questions or feedback, you are absolutely welcome to get in touch with me directly. I love to hear from our users, even if you're experiencing frustration and you want to let us know that there's something that we can do better or a flow or pain point that we can help you guys with, please don't hesitate to email me. Um, and if you have any questions or support about your specific account configuration, something that's really unique to your shop, uh, make sure that you reach out to your customer success manager, or if you don't know who that person is, our support team, um, and we'll be in touch to make sure that we get you guys all the help that we can.